Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Incarnation. It's good to be together here under the canopies. And good morning to those of you who are worshiping with us on Zoom. Uh, just a few notes of welcome before we begin. First of all, if you didn't grab them on your way in or if you didn't bring your own, you will need one of these red Books of Common Prayer, or BCP, as we like to call it. Uh, you'll also need a song sheet, and they're available at the back and at the front. So if you didn't grab one of those, you can grab one now um, or sort of wave your hands and an usher will help you. Also, you might notice that we have our new children's rhythm starting, started last week, but what we're calling Atrium on the Quilt for three to six-year-olds, give or take, happening on the quilts over here with some of the materials from our children's program inside. There are also things available for kids to do on the carts and on the shelves inside. There are restrooms in the building. There's also AC on in the building if you get hot and just need a break. And we have some water at the back for the same reason. Uh, you'll notice at the top of your song sheet, there are some page numbers that you'll need before we begin. So we'll follow the order of service in the Book of Common Prayer. And there is a bit of flipping back and forth, especially here at the beginning. So in a little bit, we'll pray the collect of the day and the page number is written at the top of your song sheet. You might want to go ahead and flip there and just put a finger in it. Uh, it's page 620, I believe. And then a little bit later, when we pray the psalm responsively, we'll be doing Psalm 54, and that's also out of your BCP. So you might want to find that. But we'll also tell you the page numbers when we get there. So we'll all be more or less on the same page. We're all learning this together. Let's just take a deep breath, sort of quiet ourselves, and then we'll begin our worship. All right, please stand and we'll begin together on page 123 of your BCP. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Now pray with me the Collect for Purity at the top of page 124. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let's sing together.
The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let's pray together proper 20 on page 620 of your Book of Common Prayer. I'll give you just a minute to get there. O Lord, you have taught us that without love, all our deeds are worth nothing. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of charity, the true bond of peace and all virtues, without which whoever lives is counted dead before you. Grant this for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And now is the time in our service where we pray for our kids. So I invite you to stretch out a hand toward a kid near you or a kid on a Zoom screen near you, and let's pray for these children. Father, we pray the words of that collect over these kids. We pray that they would grow up nothing that, or knowing that without love, all their good deeds are worth nothing. So we pray that you would pour your love into them, that you would use the adults in this church to show them what that love looks like, that they would grow up in wisdom and all virtues into your love. Amen. Now let's sing over our kids. clapping on that. A reading from Proverbs chapter 8, verses 22 through 36. The Lord created me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts of long ago. Ages ago, I was set up at the first, before the beginning of the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth when there were no springs abounding with water, before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills I was brought forth. When he, when he had not yet made earth and fields or the world's first bits of soil, when he established, it, established the heavens, I was there, when he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when he established the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limit so that the waters might not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him like a master worker. And I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world and delighting in the human race. And now my children listen to me. Happy are those who keep my ways. 
Hear instruction and be wise and do not neglect it. Happy is the one who listens to me, watching daily at my gates, waiting beside my doors. For whoever finds me finds life and obtains favor from the Lord. But those who miss me injure themselves. All who hate me love death. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join us in praying Psalm 54 responsively by whole verse. I will pray the odd verses and you'll respond with the evens. The psalm can be found on page 336 of your BCP, and I'll give you a second to find it. Save me, O God, for your name's sake, and avenge me in your strength. Hear my prayer, O God, and hearken to the words of my mouth. For the arrogant have risen up against me, and tyrants who do not have God before their eyes seek after my life. Behold, God is my helper. The Lord is he who upholds my life. He shall repay the evil of my enemies. O oh, destroy them in your faithfulness. Free will offering will I give to you. I praise you, O Lord, because it is good. For he has delivered me out of all my trouble, and my eye has seen the ruin of my enemies. A reading from James chapter 3. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes is, in speaking, is perfect, <laughs> able to keep the whole body in check with a bridle. If we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships. Though they are so large that it takes strong winds to drive them, yet they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also, the tongue is a small member yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire, and the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a world of iniquity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and is itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species, but no one can tame the tongue, a restless evil full of deadly poison. With it, we bless the Lord and Father, and with it, we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives or grapevine figs? No more can salt water yield fresh. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Please stand for the reading of the gospel. This is the holy gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. They went on from there and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had been arguing with one another who was the greatest. He sat down and called to the twelve and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. And then he took a little child and put it among them. And taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. Let me get the microphone. Let's see if I'm not too loud. Welcome, everybody, on both in person and on Zoom. My name is Liz, and I am one of the pastors here, and I'm so delighted that you are here worshiping with us this morning. Okay, so how many of you um, accessed something on the internet this week? Stick your hand up. Um, okay, pretty much 100%. Um, how much, many of you went to buy something like a tent and then noticed that there were like tent adverts on everything that you looked up okay you know there's just a, the internet knows and understands us um, and is very very quick to respond to the things that we type in that we look at one of the things which is almost kind of fun is the way that amazon prime the movies will will sort of adjust depending on you know they've always got the recommended for liz section so I'm kind of curious because this last week, Simon and I watched a movie which was not our normal, perhaps. It was a, a semi-autobiographical movie about a lady called Rada Bla Blank, who is a hip-hop rapper. And um, it was fascinating. I, I wouldn't advise it for anyone under the age of about 25. <laughs> no, honestly, it was, it, was, it was actually a fascinating movie, but the language was a little... Um, Rich. But, um, you know, I, I suspect that I'm going to be getting a lot of hip hop rapping movies suggested to me in the next days ahead. It's because the internet is constantly evolving and we all know the algorithms that are involved, which adapt tweaking all the time so that if we go down one conspiracy theory route, we will probably be fed another 20 in the days uh, ahead. And all of us obviously use the internet all the time. We're looking at words and we're generating words. You probably read a blog or two this week or watched a vlog. I wrote a blog. I'm sure many of you have put words out into the ether over these last few days. Or maybe you looked at some art or read some poetry or listened to music and you had Spotify on in the background. And all these ways that we access words day after day in a torrent, much more so perhaps than when James was writing way back when. Our word consumption now is simply enormous. And kids, if you're listening now, I don't know, perhaps you'd like to think a little bit about the way that you use words. Do you use the same words with your parents and your friends and with God? Or do you have a slightly different vocabulary which you use with each one of those? Maybe give some thought while I'm talking about the way that you use words. We also have these wonderful pictures down the side of our sanctuary. Um, and if kids, you're wondering what to do now, you older children, perhaps you'd might to pick one of those and write out the story in your own words as to what was happening in this or how you feel about the picture and how you want to respond to it. Because we're going to be talking for a little bit now about the words that we use, how we use our words to be kind or unkind, all the different 
flavors of words that we use and also the manner in which we use them. I am slightly slow to most things, and I only recently discovered the, the term social influencer. Apparently, it actually was added to the, the dictionary in 2019. So, I mean, I'm not that far behind. Simon even knows the term influencer now, don't you, Simon? I don't know where you are now. Are you with the kids? Yeah. So, you know, the, the way that we are influenced by the things around us. I, this idea of an influencer being a user who's established credibility in a specific industry. To be honest, I went on the list of influencers that are most influencing at the moment. I actually didn't know any of them. So I clearly am not their target audience, but I'm sure maybe some of you are being influenced. I then went on the Times 100 list and I, was, I scored slightly better on that. I think I knew two on that. So um but as I was thinking about influencing and the way we use our words, I happened to upon this, uh, this paragraph. It was a comment from Jonathan Roden, who is a Stanford political scientist, and he said, for issue activists and party leaders in the United States, management of internal party heterogeneity, I had to practice that word, is a central task. In order to get what they want, the core of true believers on issue X must develop strategies for managing those who are more moderate or even opposing views, who identify with the party primarily because of issue Y. One strategy is persuasion on issue X via messaging, social media, partisan cable television, aimed at wayward co-partisans. Another is to demonize the out party on issue Y in an effort to convince voters that even if they disagree with the in party on issue X, the cost of allowing the out party to win are simply too high. A final strategy is to relentlessly enforce norms by shaming and ostracizing nonconformists. Okay, that was a bit of a mouthful, but did you get the basic gist? Their strategy is persuade, demonize, shame and ostracize. And I think we see that. We see that all around us. We hear it happening in the culture around us, whether we're on pro X or pro Y, we are very aware of the way that media is being used to alter and challenge our behavior. Okay, so obviously the question is on a Sunday morning at about 9.20, what, what do we as Christians do about this? How do we respond? Because I suspect all of you are yawning and saying, yes, Liz, we know way more than you do about all this stuff. So let's turn to James again. Because James really knew also that words matter. And we all know that words can be dangerous, that we can use them to shame and to ostracize and to demonize. But we can also, as James says, use them to bless and encourage. So James is addressing this chapter to teachers and challenging them. Now, if you think about the kind of culture that they were in at the time, teachers would have had a particular influence and they would have been a particular source of information. But translate that now forward 2,000 years, and all of us, each one of us in this room, from the smallest to the largest, has a role in teaching others because we are all putting words out into our community, into our culture, which are expressing viewpoints. And so I think we can all take on board the warnings that he gives to us as teachers. Everyone offers their words into our community. And our words reveal exactly who we are and how we want the world to be for good or ill. We all know that words can be nice. Or think of a good teacher or a positive word of affirmation you've heard from your boss or somebody. Or words can be horrid. We've all watched movies about mean girls and we've probably encountered some of them in our lives. Sorry, I don't know why it's always mean girls. Boys can be mean too. Mean girls, mean boys. And then James goes lyrical on how dangerous the tongue is. A restless evil, full of deadly poison, untamable. Remember those words, demonize and shame? Well, okay, perhaps one solution is for us all just to be quiet. Maybe we should just stop talking. Shh, silence, no more words. Stop using anything. Just retreat into a little cocoon or bubble. Well, maybe. But interestingly, that's really not where James goes. He, the two metaphors he uses, or the two examples he uses, Oh, he talks about a horse and he talks about a boat. Now think about it. In James' environment, horses and boats would have been absolutely vital. They were the way you got yourself from A to B. They were the ways you got commerce from A to B. They were in use all the time. They were 
absolutely invaluable. So far from telling people to be quiet, James is telling people, be controlled, be disciplined, be thoughtful. You don't just say to a pack horse, off you go, deliver your goods where you will. You direct them, you tell them that they've got to go from A to B to deliver the goods. And so it is with our speech. Our speech has to be purposeful. We have to know that we're getting from A to B. We should have a purpose for us, our speech because we can use it so positively. James also said it's to bless the Lord and Father and to bless each other. We can build up and use our words with healthy, in healthy ways. So James doesn't say don't talk, don't speak, be quiet. But as he goes on, what he says is that what we say, and again, this is probably fairly obvious, comes from what is within. And he uses these words. He tells us to be pure and peaceable, understanding, gentle, willing to yield. Adjects that have to do with being wise and our disposition. And he also tells us about our actions. He tells us we have to be full of mercy and full of good fruits. And then finally, he talks about us being constant. He says, no partiality or hypocrisy. He invites us to be constant people. The message is clear that what we say comes out of what's inside. And that's, of course, where the problem is. Because all of us inside are a mixture of kind of holy and unholy, healed and unhealed, messy and clear. We, we, we know that we are works in process and we know that we need to be healthier and that our words need to come out of a healthier place. And Jesus, James's challenge is to be very conscious of how our interior worlds are being shaped. By the power of the Holy Spirit, all those words had such echoes of the gifts and fruit of the Holy Spirit. And of course, we have the model of Jesus. Jesus who was able to be God, who was God incarnate, who was able to express words. But note, when you look at Jesus' words, he's not always nice. He can be very direct, very blunt, very clear about the things that he says and does. So how are we going to take note of what's inside and what's coming out? Well, as I was thinking about this this week, I thought of a little challenge, which I'm going to do, and I'd encourage you to do as well. I don't know, do any, I mean, do any of you have any food allergies? or um, gluten-free, or peanuts, or, you know, okay. And some of you do, and all of you will probably know someone who's had some kind of nut allergy or, or something. They're very prevalent these days. So one of the things that if you've got a nut allergy you have to do is, or an allergy and you don't know where it's coming from, is you start with a food diary. You begin to talk about everything that you've taken in, and then you kind of report how it made you feel. Then you begin to eliminate things, or maybe you eliminate everything talk about what's going on in your body and then you begin to reintroduce foods into your body and see how's it doing is it am I still okay now that I'm drinking milk or eating cheese or whatever it is what would it look like for us to do an input audit a word audit so instead of doing um, a food diary you kept a diary over the next few weeks about where you are getting your input from and then how it makes you feel how it makes you behave. So if you are a regular on Twitter, you kind of have a little, okay, Twitter, ask your phone, how long did I spend tweeting or reading tweets this week? Your phone will probably tell you. I don't know. I don't actually have Twitter, but I have everything else. But, you know, 20 minutes. How did it make you feel? Pretty awful. Okay. Eliminate Twitter for a couple of weeks. And then maybe you will want to reintroduce it or maybe you won't. I wonder what it would look like if we looked at all our inputs, all the ways that we spend our time. And that could even include things which feel, if you like, nourishing, like reading the news or all the other things that you do on the internet. Why not itemize them? Have a look at them. Examine them. Wonder exactly how and why you're doing them. And then how are you balancing that? How are you counterbalancing that with the other inputs that you're putting into your life? How are you balancing that with the ways that you use scripture? How are you balancing that with the ways you pray? How are you balancing that with the way you interact with other people? Think of it as a, a word, examine. We often ask you to do an examine in the evenings, to look back over the day. 
So perhaps you'll include this as a little note at the end of at the end of your journal, at the end of a day, at the end of a week. Our words do matter, and we are producing them at a ridiculously high rate and volume. And so even as James talked about bridling the horse or steering the boat, be very aware that the things that you put into you are the things that will come out to you. And then as well as you think about the ways that you're consuming things, take note of the fact that you are in a community. And I love the fact that Jesus called us to be accountable to one another so that we can be known by others. So that people can say to you, hey, how was your word consumption this week? How did you do? Did you feel like it was healthy or unhealthy? Did you feel like the things that came out of you reflected the things that were, you put into you? Take some time at small group this week to check in with each other and say, how did that make you feel? What, is it, what does it feel like to do a word diary? Today, we're welcoming four new members into our community and we do this periodically. And it's an opportunity for us to get to know people and to say to them, how are you doing? To say what is going on in your life. To be open and aware of each other. And so I invite you, we're going to have a few moments of quiet in a moment just before I invite our members up to sign the book. This week, can you make sure that you watch what the inputs are that you're putting into your body, your mind, your heart, so that you're able to be a steady person? Note those words again from James chapter 3. Pure, peaceable, gentle, full of mercy and good fruits with no partiality or hypocrisy, to be wise and steady. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, will you help us to grow in our constancy? Will you help us to be wise as we consider the words that we use and engage with? Will you help us to weed out of our lives things which are unhelpful? and to feed on things which nourish and grow. Thank you, Jesus, that you are always our example, able to speak clearly into situations and circumstances, able to speak words of life and truth. May we follow you more closely in the ways that we speak. Amen. All righty, I'm going to invite JM, Chrissy, Paul, and Gabby. No, I don't think Gabby's here. Okay. Oh, there you are. You're right there, right in my eyesight. Come on up, all four of you. Bring your song sheets with you because you'll need them. Because you're going to sing for us. Ah! <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> that was a joke. Okay, that was a joke. Honestly, you're not going to have to sing for us. Okay, I'm going to stand up here. Amy, are you going to come and join me? But to begin with, can everyone stand? And you've got your song sheets. Um, we're going to do the, today. We on uh, membership Sunday. We always do the Apostles' Creed. So let us join together to proclaim our faith in the words of the ancient baptismal confession, the Apostles' Creed. Do you believe and trust in God uh, the Father? I do. do. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in Jesus Christ? I do. I, do. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will, he will come, come again, again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I do. do. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I'm going to ask these four people some promises, but before I do, perhaps you could all just kind of shout out your name and wave. I'll direct this to you, but just shout and wave to the Zoomies and everyone. <laughs> Paul, start with you. 
Right, I'm Paul. <laughs> I'm Gabby. I'm Chrissy. JM. <laughs> And I'm so excited that these four have decided to join us. You know, it's been a strange old season, hasn't it, In uh, during COVID and the pandemic. And this is our first live membership since um, March 2019. We had people join while we were on Zoom. It just didn't feel the same. Actually, Tom, we should probably make you come and stand up here. You became a member. Come, come quickly. Um, yeah, you have to yeah. sing. Yeah. Um, and I don't think Anna or Michelle are here. No, that's fine. Um, but you did it on Zoom, I know. So let's let's have the real life flesh, Tom, make promises as well. <laughs> so we have membership at this church, really, so that we can say to people, hey, are you committing to us? This isn't a lifetime commitment. This is just a now commitment. This is, hey, I am worshiping at Incarnation, and I want to be a part of the community, and I want to be accountable. So you can ask any one of these guys how their word audit is going in a week or two and say, are you, are you being accountable about the ways that you're using your language? But now, as we have all affirmed our faith in the Apostles' Creed, I've already asked you to come to the front. <laughs> Do you renew the promises made at your baptism and commit yourself to keep them with God's help? Do you submit yourself to the guidance, care, and nurture of this church? Do you affirm your desire to worship and follow Christ with your whole self? Do you promise to give generously of yourself for the life, health, and wonder of this community of believers? Do you affirm your desire to welcome others into the kingdom of God? seeking to love your neighbor as yourself. We, we as, as your pastors, pastors affirm that we will lead and shepherd you under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, Spirit in submission to scripture and with wholehearted delight in seeking to follow God's lead. And now the adults have made promises, but I would invite all of the adult members of Incarnation to now make promises to our children who are too young to be formal members, but are very much a vital part of this community. Do you welcome these children into our common life so that they may come to worship Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? We do. Will you, by word and by example, help them to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which they have been called, ever growing in faith, wonder, and all heavenly virtues. We will. Let us pray together. O oh God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us welcome our new members as we receive them into the family of Incarnation Anglican Church. And we're not actually exchanging the peace right now. But um, we're going to invite these guys to come and sign the book and get a bell. And maybe you can cheer and clap and then we will sing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Woo!
despise and leave me. They have left my Savior too. Human hearts and looks deceive me. Thou art not like them untrue. Oh, well, thou dost smile upon me, God of wisdom, love, and might. Foes may hate and friends disown me, thou my face and all is bright. So sin and fear and care, joy to find in every station, something still to do or bear. Think what spirit dwells within thee, think what Father smiles are thine, think that Jesus died to seated as we pray. <clears throat> Please join me as we offer our petitions to our Heavenly Father. Let us pray for the church and the world, after which of each section of our petitions I will say, Lord, in your mercy, and please respond with, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the ministration of your holy word to us today. And may our tongues pray to you now and bless and praise you. Help us by the Holy Spirit to use these tongues to bless and not curse, to uplift, encourage, and exhort. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the peace of the whole world and the well-being and unity of the people of God. We pray this week for our country of the week, the Holy See, the seat of government of the Roman Catholic Church. We ask that you guide them as they minister to immigrants and refugees throughout the world. And we pray that they remain strong as they stand for the sanctity of life, both in the womb and end of life, and for the sanctity of marriage. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For Foley, our Archbishop, and John, our Bishop, we pray that you give wisdom to your church as we undertake to seek a successor to Bishop John. And we thank you for his many years serving your people. Help him and Meg as they discern this next season in their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those in Incarnation Anglican, our clergy, staff, and postulants who proclaim the gospel here and teach and disciple others, we pray your blessing on them. We give thanks to you for our new members today, Paul, 
JM and Chrissy and Gabby, and pray that you will bless them as they serve and engage in this community of faith. We pray that you will guide us as we elect a new vestry over the next week, and thank you for our slate of Caitlin, Jenny, Corey, Logan, and Tom, who are willing to serve this church. Guide the vestry today as it meets to administer temporal matters and provide counsel on spiritual matters of your church. We also lift up especially this week our outreach partner Larch here in South Arlington, throughout the DC area and the world, and pray for Eva Elizabeth and her colleagues as they minister to the core members there. Give that community strength, keep them physically well, and help them maintain dignity of all through the, throughout the challenges and joys in serving the men and women with disabilities there. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters in Christ who are persecuted for their faith, we pray especially for your people who face threats and death in Afghanistan and ask for your divine protection over them and the aid workers seeking to alleviate suffering there. We also lift up all in countries such as Cuba, North Korea, and China who seek liberty, and we pray that you raise up leaders to lead them into freedom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our nation, for those in authority here and all in public service, especially the Congress and our nation's judges and courts, we thank you for the freedoms we are blessed with in this nation, the Constitution which guides our laws, and the founders who wrote it over 200 years ago, and ask that you will give wisdom to all in authority to enact laws in keeping with the ideals of justice and freedom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially for Julie's cousin Dan as he recovers from surgery, for Ketera, for Stephanie, and for Michelle's uncle, we praise you for the recovery from COVID of Megan's sister and the same for Jenny and Katie's brother. You may now add your own petitions, either silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who have departed this life, especially for Mason's family, neighbors of Nancy and Grant, who mourn his unexpected death, and for the family of Henry and Catherine's friend Gil, comfort all who grieve these losses. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we also thank you for the recent birth of Anastasia Claire Griffin, daughter of Jody and David, and Fletcher Goble, son of Jenny and Ben. Bless these newborns and their parents. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us now humbly confess our sins to Almighty God, first silently, and then in a few moments, I will lead us in the confession found on page 130 of the Book of Common Prayer. And now join me together in the, in the prayer of confession. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sin to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all those who truly turn to him. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. I invite you to extend the peace of Christ to those around you. The peace of Christ be with the Zoomies. <laughs> Well, as you are concluding your words and gestures of peace, I'm just going to run through a few announcements. You're welcome to have a seat. Um, I love seeing people connecting, meeting new people, saying peace, bumping elbows, giving hugs, etc. Uh, so I kind of hate to break up the party, but I have something great, which is announcements. First of all, as you heard in Clayton's prayers, um, we are electing our new vestry. So you can read the candidates' bios in Liz. There's a link in Liz's letter from this week. And if you are a member of this church, the four people who became members today, or someone who's ever done that in our history, then you'll receive an email later today with a link to do the election online. And then you'll have a week to complete that. And we'll be nominating our four new vestry members. Uh, second announcement, small groups have begun. They started this past week, but you are still welcome and encouraged to sign up. There's information about the groups online. Uh, there's an online group and three in-person groups, and you can learn more, sign up, et cetera, all online. And we would encourage everyone to do that. We're finishing out James. We've got groups studying all kinds of different things. So do sign up and join a group. Uh, thirdly, we are in the midst of our new fall rhythm for our kids, as you probably see and hear happening. And um, we have atrium on the quilt during the service for kids ages three to six or so for our younger ones. And then immediately after the service for ages six and up, we'll have a sort of Bible study, Visio Divina on quilts over along our fence. So you can look for Josie or for any of our children's catechists after the service to participate in that. Um, yeah, and then next Sunday, right after the service, we have a parish meeting, so just plan to stay put, um, and we will discuss things happening in the life of our church, some important stuff going on. So we would encourage everyone, members, non-members, friends, families, pets, neighbors, whomever, to stay for the parish meeting, and we'll keep it pretty quick. And then, uh, as we've been doing under the canopies from week to week, we have a little time for testimonies. This is an opportunity to just share where you've seen God at work in your life, um, where you're hoping God will be at work in your life, maybe a response to something you heard in the sermon, maybe a response to something you witnessed in the membership. But we would just love to hear if there's anything you would like to share with us about what God has been doing in your life. Last call. All right, let me pray for us. Father, we thank you that even though an open mic is intimidating, uh, we do know that you are at work in all of our lives. And I pray particularly for each one of us this week that you would be at work in teaching us how to discipline our tongues, how to pay attention to what comes into us and what goes out of us. We pray that your Holy Spirit would um, guide us in wisdom. Amen. Amen. And now if you would like to give, you are welcome to do that online. There's instructions and a, a link and a text number to give if you would like. But also as we turn our hearts toward the table, we just invite all of us to prepare ourselves in body, mind, and spirit for communion. Send 
church once more and make it truly thine. Fill it with love and joy and power, with righteousness and peace. the greatness, the power, and the glory, and the victory, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. All things come from you, O Lord, and of your own have we given you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. And I invite you to sing a new Sanctus to some of you, and it is in your song sheet. Oh. 
you to be seated. Holy and gracious Lord, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all, that by his suffering and death we might be saved. By his resurrection, he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory, that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup, and when he had given it thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink this, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Sanctify us also that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us with all your saints into the joy of your heavenly kingdom, where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Or let it keep the feast. Alleluia. <laughs> we do not presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose character is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body and our souls washed through his most precious blood and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. 
grant us your peace. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. All those who are baptized and following Christ are welcome to receive communion. This morning, we're gonna have three stations, one in the back and two up here in the front. If you need a gluten-free wafer, then come to me, the woman in green. I'll be standing on this side. I invite you all to come. Body and blood of the Lord. us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. And now let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Well, a warm welcome to our new members. And for those of you, uh, well, for all of you, everyone, <laughs> there's a prayer available at the back at the wooden table. And we would invite you um, to receive prayer there if you need.